There are a few things more quintessentially British than a game of cricket on a sunny afternoon and a glass of pims. We have the sunshine, we have the cricket, we're in the shadow of Windsor Castle and I'm off to get my pims right now. The match is now an integral part of the social calendar in Windsor and this year the crowd was even bigger than before. However, there was a new twist to the event because the all-male Lords Taverners team were faced by the World Cup winning side of English ladies. Many congratulations to you for winning the uh, World Cup in ladies cricket, a major achievement. How, who did you beat? We uh, beat New Zealand in the final at Lords last August. And as a result of winning the World Cup and uh, lots of other major achievements in the game, uh, you've been presented with the Daily Express Sports Team of the Year Award. Yeah, that was at a presentation due um, last November, I think, uh, which was closely followed by the Sunday Times and the Sunday Times Team of the Year Award. And we also invited to the BBC Sports Personality. Wonderful. How does it feel to be playing so many uh, very well-known cricketers and celebrities today here in the shadow of Windsor Castle? <laughs> well, it, it's a perfect setting. I'm sure everybody would like to play at this uh, ground, uh, particularly with the Duke of Edinburgh and Prince Edward here, uh, as we represented the Duke. So it's just a privilege for us. What's next for the uh, England ladies cricket team for the rest of the season? Well, we're playing a, a lot of charity events like this around the country um, and we play a lot of domestic uh, club and county games. Um, unfortunately, we haven't got a tour this year. Uh, we're looking to have a tour next year by the, the New Zealanders, so that's our main aim for next year. The event raised £10,000 on the day last year and it's hoped even more will be raised this time around. Going for goals, Henry Kelly and Fraser Hines started the ball rolling by carrying a blanket around the edge of the pitch and getting contributions from the crowd. I believe they even chipped in themselves, and they certainly took money from us. And delighted to welcome star of the uh, stage, screen, Emmerdale Farm, and now Emmerdale, Fraser Hines. That's right, yeah. Fraser, welcome. Thank you. Um, cricket, first love? It is uh, cricket and horses, a horse racing cricket. Um, the hope joint first loves. Um, every Sunday in the summer, I go anywhere to play a game of cricket. Um, in fact, my wife always says, you know, I'm going to get to the date that first next year because every Sunday is filled in with a cricket match. Your involved with, involvement with the Lord's Taverners is not quite as long as your involvement with uh, a well-known TV series. No, I, I, I mind you, I think, no, I think I was a member of the Lord's Taverners before Emmerdale started. Really? I was a member of the Lord's Taverners when I was in Doctor Who, which was in 1969-70. And Emmerdale started in 72, so I've been a Lord's Taverners longer. And the, the, the pace of the programme has changed very, very much indeed over the last few years. It started off as a very sedate, soap-based yeah, on a small um, farm, but now we've got... Cows just swishing in the breeze. Now we've got cows flying through the air, aeroplanes landing, landing on us, gunshots. And, and recently it's been, we've been calling it Emma Bill Farm, <laughs> with all the police and the sirens. Why do, you, why do you think it's changed so radically? I don't know, I think the, the writers and uh, the producers just thought we'd spice it up a little bit. Um, it could have done with a few weeks, I think, after the, uh, me being nearly drowned, rescuing uh, Vic Windsor. It could have done with a few weeks, just maybe rest, see a few sheep, but um, they decided over the post office siege as well. Is it more of a challenge now that you're doing a lot more stuff It exterior? is. And to be honest, I've enjoyed the last few weeks creeping about and getting blown up, whether you saw it or not, when I the did. post office blew up and I had to do my own stunt. That was, I had a bit of trepidation when they said we can only do it once, but it would take an hour to set the stunt up. And you've got to do it, Fraser, because you, you're walking towards the camera. Um, my heart was something a little bit, but uh, I quite enjoyed doing it because it, that, to me, made a nice change from a milking scene or shearing sheep. And um, what of the future with Emmerdale? Um, I'm taking uh, about a year out of Emmerdale and doing other stuff and just going to watch the horses grow up and if a nice job comes along I'll, I'll take that. If not, I'll just concentrate on my other business, the, the stock rearing business. We watch and wait with interest. Uh, Fraser, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted to be joined by one of the players of the uh, Lord's Taverners 11, and that's Gavin Campbell from Nurse Life. Hi, Gavin. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Very good. Um, a sad time for you, actually. After 21 years of that's life, it's almost all over. Uh, sad? I don't know. Um, Has it come to the end of its natural life, or...? I think 21 years is probably about the right, the right time. But there's still a lot of work in that field to be done. And no, it's not a sad occasion in the way that you mean. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a slight sadness at, at its passing. But it's also uh, an occasion to remember all the very good things that we've uh, been involved with and the very many friends, hundreds, thousands of friends that the program's had. I mean, I, I haven't been with it for all the 21 years. I've been with it for 12. For those who've been 12 
very, very special years in my life. You're an integral part of the team, and, and it's been very much a team effort all along. Mm. Um, yes, very much so. There, there are obviously highlights for different members of the team. Has there been a spe specific highlight for you? Well, I think really the highlight for me was when we started doing items about transplantation and the wonderful benefits that can be brought to uh, men, women, and children through transplantation. I think of the story of Ben Hardwick. Ben Hardwick. And uh, many, many other kids, the majority of whom have survived, are doing incredibly well. And I myself have become involved uh, in a very major way with the, the Transplant Sports Association of Great Britain. Uh, in fact, I'm the only non-medic, non-transplantee who's a member. I'm a life member, I'm proud to say. And, and that gives me enormous pleasure because I can look around me and go to the transplant games every year. I've been, we've actually thousands, covered the European well, transplant you know, games twice. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of, of people who otherwise would either have a very low quality of life or would not be alive at all. Kind of a, a best of that's life still to come, still to look forward to. Yes, it's going to be that's a very life emotional all over. It's going to be an emotional <laughs> night for you. Yes, that's um, right. And, and pursuant to that, what are you going to be up to? Well, I think I'm probably going to be spending uh, a lot more time with my favourite charity, you know, which is uh, very important to me. Me. And spend a bit more time with the family. <laughs> and time with the family, yes. I'm going to be doing some holiday programmes. And um, I've, got, I've got some projects that are you know, in the melting pot at the moment. We we'll hope to see them come to fruition. Hopefully early part of next year. Well, I'm glad that we were able to be part of your last appearance in front of the cameras for at least a little while. Well, until next week. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Gavin, very much. Thank you. The arrival of His Highness Prince Philip and His Royal Highness Prince Edward attracted the attention of the world's press, and most were keen to see if Sophie Rees Jones was present. She wasn't, but we were all treated like royalty. One of the most important aspects of any royal event are the pictures that you see in your daily newspaper. And with me is probably the most famous royal photographer of all time, 20 years with the son, Arthur Edwards. How are you? Quite well, Nice to welcome you. What's been the most stunning um, aspect of photog photographing the royals over the years? Well, the thing about the royals is that everybody wants to see nice pictures of them. So uh, whenever you get any, any picture that's half decent, uh, it'll bound to go in the paper. And that's, that was a great joy for me in those early years when I was a struggling news photographer. So from one point of view, really, your job's made quite easy. Well, during the 80s, when Diana was very, very big, then it, it was everything you did at first just went in the paper. It's not like that anymore. And in fact, one of the reasons we're here today is we're hoping uh, perhaps a new star is about to emerge, and this is Sophie Rees-Jones, the girlfriend of Prince Edward. And so if she comes along, it might give the, uh, the, the, the rat tag a bit of a release of life. A new dimension. Yeah. Um, it would be fair to say, uh, allegedly, you are Diana's favourite photographer. Well, I've never said that. Other, others have said it, but I've never said it. Uh, I mean, certainly it was during the, the, the early years I got on very well with her. Um, obviously, in the, in the last few months when she's taken, a, uh, taken it upon herself to leave uh, public life, I haven't seen much of her. Uh, but certainly, uh, we got on okay, yeah. Uh, in fact, we had a lot of fun here, you know. Apart from the travel, and um, you've been on several world tours with the royal family, what's been the most fascinating aspect about photographing them over the years? Well, the thing is, when you're getting close to them, you know, the closer you get to everything, the more it becomes a bit ordinary, and that's what I've noticed, you know, they're just really an ordinary family in extraordinary circumstances, you know, they have their problems like we all do, you know, their marital problems, problems with the children, and getting close to them and seeing that has made it, uh, it's been interesting for me, uh, to see that, uh, that they are, because when I was a child, you know, to watch the coronation and to watch the royals, you know, I was like most people, you know, I was uh, gobsmacked by them, yeah, but now I'm, uh, I see them as they really are, you know, they're just an ordinary family, just happen to be the premier family in this country. The Lord's Taverners have raised in excess of 13 and a half million pounds in their history, and one and a half million pounds was collected last year alone. The money raised has paid for the distinctive New Horizons green minibuses. At £20,000 each, they're not cheap, but they do provide a fantastic service offering mobility and hope to the physically and mentally handicapped children in our area.